Um, oh, I think we're live. Um, hey, oh, everyone. I don't know if this is working properly or not. Uh, oh, yep, we are. I can hear myself. John Luke's already put cringe. Great. Off to a wonderful, wonderful start. Um, I don't know how many of you are going to turn up for this. I haven't even streamed uh, in in ages. Um, but but we're here. Um, we're doing this, which is uh, streaming my ranking of all modern series, uh, 1 to 13, via the medium of a tier list. Because... You know, if there's one thing I love doing, it's it's uh, getting onto trends that are what you call it, um, uh, what you call it, dead. I am very much that. <laughs> you know, joining trends that are dead. We are bringing back the tier list today, and we're going to be going over each Doctor Who series from the revived era and going over my thoughts on each of them. Um, hello to everyone in here. So we got. Uh, let's read the total people we've got in here so far. Uh, at Zinko, Jean Luc Harry, I am Hoovian, Oscar Watt, George Spectrum, Will, Harry Duncan, uh, Mo Scala, uh, I think I said Spectrum, Radio Blade, good to see Radio Blade, Joel Williams, uh, Robloxian Filming Center, Renegade Studios, George, I think that's everyone. Um, okay, so yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, be sure to leave a like and um, I'll show you the tier list. Let me make sure I've set up my keybinds correctly. That's always a it's always a, a nerve-wracking moment for these. Yep, okay. That's that's you guys. You can see you guys, but if we go to here, you can see the tier list. We can see here we have every single... I'm going to remove this. Every single revived series, and um, we're basically going to be going over them all uh, in a very, very fun, very topical way. Uh, I think. Probably not. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going in chronological order. So I'll be going from 1 to 13. You know, I'm not one of these people who will start at, like, the worst ones. And then, because you want to see, you want to see them all in order. So that's what we're going to do. Starting off with series 1. And I am going to have to put that straight up. Well, the thing is, okay. So the way this person has set this up before I start. Best story ever told. Absolutely fantastic. And you know what? So was I. Great, good, middling, not good, active dislike, or oh dear, oh dear. So, the best story ever told, I would say, is your absolute favourite. Probably, right? Like, that's your absolute favourite, and then absolutely fantastic is like, top, top, top tier, but just not your favourite one. So, on that basis, if we, if we assume that that's what best story ever told means, then series one goes, because there can only be one greatest story ever told right and on that basis i'm going to put series one in absolutely fantastic you know what so was i purely on the basis that in fact i mean yeah as i said it's not my favorite series but it is like a top top tier absolutely fantastic christopher Eccleston hits the ground running as the ninth doctor rose is at her best um the stories there's not really a bad one in the bunch in my opinion even the weaker ones like i guess long game I would probably still watch and get something out of. Uh, Boomtown's a lot of fun. Dalek's, like, phenomenal. 10 out of 10. Uh, Bad Wolf Parting of the Way is one of the best New Who finales. Rose, a great star. End of the World's a lot of fun. You know, there's, like, so many good ones. Uh, the weakest one for me is probably Unquiet Dead. It's just kind of eh. It's a very, like, generic sort of Doctor Who historical. But, yeah, I think absolutely fantastic. And you know what? So was I. That's going to get very annoying to say repeatedly. Is going to be... Uh, my first, my first uh, selection there. What's everyone saying about that in chat? Series one was great. I do agree. It is. It's absolutely great. Um, but how great is the question? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ooh, we're getting some. Watch the new. Uh, watch this be super based or super cringe. There is no in between. Look, I all my takes are super based. You know, if if you know me, you'll know. Every single take I've ever made is absolutely right, 100% of the time. I've never been wrong about anything, ever, factually. It's never happened. Um, I'm always right. Uh, but with that said, uh, Series 1 S tier. If there was an S tier, it would be going in there, but there isn't. 
So on that basis, I kind of have to put it, because it's not my favourite, so I can't put it in Greatest Story Ever Told. But we're moving on now to Series 2, and let's get into that. So, uh, moving into Series 2. Do, 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 do. Okay, Series 2. This one is somewhat more difficult, because I would definitely call it the weakest of the RTD run. Um, I'd call it, yeah, significantly weaker than Series 1, but by no means bad. Um, so I'm sort of torn between great and good here. Um, I feel as though I'd put something else in great that's going to be coming later, and I definitely would put that above this. Uh, there are some good episodes of this one. main one that stands out to me immediately is um, the devil one. Um, Satan Pit, uh, Impossible Planet. That one is just, like, stellar. One of the best base under sieges I think the show's ever done. Um, I do think this is where, like, the Doctor and Rose's dynamic starts to get a little bit irritating. Uh, I don't find it as irritating as some people do, but I definitely do get that a little bit. You know, New Earth, Tooth and Claw, they're kind of a uh, school reunion I really like. Um, I think that one, we don't talk about that one enough, I don't think. Um, what else? The Sideman Two Part is really good. Doomsday and Army of Ghosts is really good. Girl in the Fireplace is, is good. Yeah, there's a lot of good in this one, but it's definitely not as consistently good as, as the first, um, like, as consistently great as Series 1 was. So I think that's going in good. I don't know how controversial that's going to be. Uh, but I think I'm right in saying that. I, I feel as though, to me, I'm, I'm putting that in the right place. Uh, whether you guys agree will be another thing. Um, I'm going to check what you guys are thinking about that. Series 2 is fine. Uh, fourth tier. Yeah, that's where I put it. So I take that to mean I was right. Or at least, um, you know, they didn't make a terrible decision there, which I appreciate. Uh, Fear Her and Love and Monsters dragged the series down. Yeah, true. Didn't even think about those two. I actually forgot about those two, which kind of says a lot. Yeah. Uh, series 1 only in A. Listen, okay. You, c the, the, the way they've set it up, you can see here, it's, it's greatest story ever told. And in my opinion, Series 1 isn't my absolute greatest story. You know, it's not my absolute favourite. So I can't put it in the best story ever told, can I? If, if this was S, I would be putting Series 1 in S, but it's not. It's... By the categories, best story ever told, there can only be one best story ever told, you know? Okay, Series 3. Now, Series 3, I would say, is an improvement on Series 2, but not as good as Series 1. So, on that basis, where is Series 3? Uh, here it is. I would put it in great. Uh, to, to, to sort of expand upon that, uh, you've got some really, really stellar ones in here. Human Nature, Family of Blood. I think Martha's an improvement on, on Rose in nearly every way. My only sort of uh, downside with regards to the dynamic specifically is that obviously the Doctor's still very much in his kind of lovesick puppy phase where he's like, oh no, Rose is gone, which, ah, that does kind of get a bit graying. Even though this one does have arguably the weakest Dalek story in the RTD era being Daleks in Manhattan, uh, I would still consider that to be a really solid Dalek story. I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as uh, some people make out. The final three-parter, I think, is actually really, really good as well. I don't think the ending is as bad to me as it is to some other people. Utopia is, is like, a 10 out of 10. Uh, you know, Human Nature, Family of Blood, as I said, really good. I'm trying to think of the other episodes. Gridlock is okay. Um... I don't, I, because that's Russell's favourite script, isn't it? And I've never quite got that. Uh, Smith and Jones, really fun. Nice introduction. Um, I really should have, like, the Wikipedias up for each series, because, you know, obviously I'll remember them when people say them in the chat. Uh, 42, that's the Chris Chibnall one. The less we say about that, the better. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy in, with series three being here. Uh, I think it's a pretty solid series. I mean, yeah, I've got things like Lazarus Experiment as well, which are a bit weaker. Um, but then you have, yeah, you have some things that I really like in there as well. I would say it's an improvement on Series 2, so that's why it's going in great. What do we all think of that? Is that a good choice? Hey, Tharys, you mad lad. Hope you're doing well. I am. Series 3 ain't as good as Series 1. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's not as good as Series 1. Dude, Gridlock is great. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I don't know whether I'd call it, like, RTD's best script, though. Like, I know that he really likes that one. I actually love Dalek's Tame Manhattan. Yeah, it's really not that bad. Um, okay. So, now we move on to... I, did they rank... Did they put the Series 4 and the Specials separately? Or did they put them together? 
Where's series four? Because that's series six, series 12, series seven, series 10, series five. Oh, they get series four. So they put series four. Okay, now, <laughs> full, full disclosure, this is a bit of a dilemma for me because my favorite series of all time, series five, like it's my childhood series. I grew up with that one. But if we're talking purely from a quality perspective, Series 4, especially with the specials, would definitely edge that out. Like, there's so much good stuff in there. I just couldn't in good conscience say that Series 5 is better than that. However, as I said, Series 5 is my favourite. So what I might do, break my own rules a little bit, I'm going to have there be two best stories ever told for different reasons, I think. Series 4 is going in best story ever told. On the basis that, like, quality-wise, it's just fantastic. Like, there's so many stories that are just, like, almost, you know, flawless. At midnight, turn left, in the flor- uh, uh, in the forest of the night? No, no, no. Um, uh, forest of the Dead, you know, the library one, the, the library two-part, the, the Stephen Moffat one. I'm not very good with names, I don't know if you have no- Even things like Planet of the Ood, which is, like, a less memorable one, is, like, really, really good. Waters of Mars... You know, there's just such great, great stories in here that I couldn't not have this up here. But, yeah. So, like, there's so many stories that I love in this one. Obviously, it's not perfect. Some of the specials are a bit weak. Um, But, yeah. Series 4, to me, is just peak. Like, in terms of quality, I don't think Doctor Who ever matches it. Um, You know, even things like Fires of Pompeii as well is, like, a really interesting character piece. Yeah, there's just... And obviously... Tennant and Tate's dynamic is like, in terms of Doctor Companion dynamics, is one of the strongest. Um, you know, their report is absolutely immense. You've got the Stolen Earth Journey's End, which is a phenomenal finale and just a phenomenal television achievement. Yeah, I could gush about Series 4 all day, and I, I might, you know, you don't know, you can't stop me. Um, um, yeah, Series 4, what a series, and it has to be up here. You know, even things like the opener, the um, the adipose one, uh, the partners in crime, that one is, like, really fun. You know, it, it just doesn't miss. I'd say the weakest episode, ooh, someone, the, the wolves, the wolves are, are speaking to me, they're saying stuff. Anyway, uh, even the weakest one is probably the Doctor's Daughter, probably, uh, but even that, I would probably still watch uh, and get something out of. Yeah, I think I've, I've done enough to justify Series 4's position. I don't know what that noise is. What is that noise? It's like a... A weird... I think it might be the door. Anyway. Series 5. Now, Series 5, again, is going to go into Great Story I've Ever Told for a different reason. For a different reason. Um, Series 5 is going in there because it's my favourite. Not because it's the best, but because it's my favourite. Don't get me wrong, it does have, again, some clunkers. I mean, no no series is perfect, like, at all. Like, they all have they all have their down points. Like, I'd say, for example, things like Vampires of Venice. Um, the Silurian one's, like, okay. Uh, things like that. But then you've got things like The Eleventh Hour, Amy's Choice. Just so many stories I absolutely love. The finale, I think, is actually pretty good as well. Um, yeah, and Mike Matt Smith is just the Doctor. I love the vibe of this series. Um, I love uh, the Ponds. I love their whole dynamic. Uh, yeah, the, the Weeping Angel two-parter, in my opinion, we didn't talk about Blink earlier. Better than Blink, in my opinion. Yeah, Series 5, phenomenal. Um, and that's why these two, they occupy a great story ever told, but for different reasons. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what's everyone thinking about my, my suggestions so far in the chat? Uh, turn left was amazing, but midnight was phenomenal. See, I'm the other way around. I would say turn left, I prefer to midnight. Uh, no Thary is ultimate betrayal. Um, series 5 is the best, the specials actively drag down series 4. True, but then, like, there's just so many bangers in series 4, though. I mean, I put them both on level pegging, um, you know, but yeah. Series 4 is the best. Me, Catherine Tate's probably the favourite companion. She is great. She, uh, Catherine Tate's phenomenal. Um, Blink is really mind-blowing for me. I, it's good. I would still say I prefer the Series 5 one, though. Series 5 super underrated. I agree. 
all of the Matt Smith era is relatively underrated in terms of in terms of current fan discourse. By that I mean Twitter. Like when when I call the Matt Smith era underrated, I'm not saying by like the general public because the general public do have a pretty like high view of it. I'm talking about like in like fan discussion. I feel like uh, series five and the rest of the Matt Smith era doesn't really get its dues. Um, when it comes to discussion of Doctor Who series, and I don't think it's very fair. So yeah, series five is matching series four in great story ever told. Um, part of me wants to move series one up there as well, but I can't have too many, and I think three in great story ever told would be taking the make a bit. Okay, series six. Now, full disclosure, I haven't rewatched all of series six in a long time, but there are some stories in it I absolutely love. Doctor's Wife, um, Girl Who Waited, the the opener. Um, is really good as well. I I have a lot of fun with Good Man Goes to War, uh, things like that. There are things like the the Rebel Flesh two parter, um, as well. well. I'm going between again great and good. For this, I wouldn't I like I would not call it middling by any means. Um, you know, it, it's quite a memorable series. I think you know, there's a lot of lot of. A lot of cool stuff in it. There is also things like closing time, though, which do drag it down a bit. I mean, I didn't talk about, like, the lodger in Series 5 would be another week episode. Controversial opinion, though. I don't think Victory is, like, that bad. I think that one gets a bit too much shtick. And um, Beast Below, uh, I know this was meant to be about Series 6, but Beast Below, pretty great. Um, and I love the metaphor of the, the, the Star Whale being compared to the Doctor. I think that's really cool. Uh, yeah, um, so Series 6, as I was saying, Gil Who Waited, Doctor's Wife... Uh, the, the opener, God Complex. God Complex is pretty good. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of good stories in Series 6. I think... Oh, it's tough. I'm either putting it here or here, and I can't decide where. I'd say the finale drags it down a bit. Is it the, the Wedding of song That probably drags it down a bit. Um, oh, also, in terms of Series 5, Christmas Carol, best Christmas special. I'm saying that right now. Um... So yeah, the finale probably drags it down, but I... Hmm. <sighs> Ooh, this is tough. This is actually really tough. I'm putting it here for now. That might annoy some people, but I'm putting it in great. Um, okay. Okay. I don't know how everyone's feeling about that, because I feel like that was a tough decision for me. Uh, Beast Below praise. Awesome story. Love the themes and how it ties into the finale. I agree. Beast Below is great. Um... There are definitely some awesome stories in Series 4. There are some bad ones, and it doesn't quite stick the landing. Fair enough. I just think that there's so much great stuff in Series 4. It's just, there's so many bangers that you've got you to respect it, really. Um, Craig's son needs to be a companion someday. I agree. Series 6 so bad, he's talking about Series 5. It's a, nah, Series 6 is pretty good. Um, which is why I put it in great. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, all of Matt's theories in my childhood, too. I'm in that, very much the same position as you are there. Um, right, Series 7. Now then. Anyone who follows me will know I kind of have a little bit of a love for Series 7. You know, it's not... I can't call it the best series, because it isn't. But there are things that I really like about it. You know, it's Town Called Mercy, Rings of Aka 10... You know, there's episodes I really like about it. I really like Amy and Rory's departure, even if Angels Take Manhattan. Not Angels Take Manhattan. Angels in Manhattan. The, the one where they're in, in in New York. You know, that one, like, the, the whole Statue of Liberty thing, kind of dumb, but, like, I think Amy and Rory's departure sort of saved that story because I think they get a really nice departure. Well, I mean, Rory kind of just doesn't get to speak, but, I mean, Amy's departure, at least, is very nice, and it does get me a bit emotional because these guys are, like, my childhood team um i really like uh, the specials as well obviously we're including time and day of the doctor and stuff like that so i don't know whether i can put it in gr i don't know whether i can say it matches up to series three but i don't know whether i put it on the same level as series two i almost feel it needs to be a middle between this and this i really like how it kind of i've said before and people make fun of me for this. It it does kind of, in some ways, mirror um, like the first Doctor's development in a in in a way, in like a sort of micro way. In in so much as the Snowman, you get the Doctor sort of sulking alone in his TARDIS, 
you know, just kind of waiting for eternity to pass him by. And then he finds a new companion who shows him the wonders of the universe again, um, you know, before his death. And I think that's really nice because, you know, retroactively, he's the last one in the cycle. So him going on the same journey kind of as the first one in the cycle is really nice. I think that should have been explored a bit more. And for those of you saying, like, it might not be there, there's bits in, like, Rings of Akaten where where um, the Doctor will go, oh, you know, I took Susan here and stuff like that. So I think that was a running theme. And if you, if you go all the way to Time of the Doctor, they make a very conscious effort to make Matt Smith look a bit like William Hartnell. I think that was part of the story of Series 7. Um, yeah, it's not perfect. Uh, they do kind of waste the great intelligence, which I think is a shame. Uh, the, yeah, and like Clara... I would say Clara here... I do quite like, although I will admit she does not a lot to her in series seven. I'm gonna put her, I'm gonna put it in good. So so far we've we've got like I'd say a pretty pretty good run of of Doctor Who right here. I feel like I've been too nice. Have I been too nice? I feel like people are gonna not think I've been too nice once we get to some of the later series. Um, Power of three still best Chibnall episode. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that lets it down is the ending, and to be honest, that wasn't even their fault. That was just Stephen Burkoff being Stephen Burkoff. Um, yeah, so that's Series 7. Clara is 100 pen better at 12. As someone who's been re-watching Series 8, uh, I do kind of agree now. Uh, I never used to. Speaking of Series 8... <laughs> um, now, this one's a tough one for me because, as I said, I've been re-watching it. It's nowhere near as bad as I remember it being. There are some really good stories. Uh, Flatline, Mummy on the Earth Express. I think Into the Dalek, Wild Derivative is um, still a good story. Uh, Deep Breath is a solid opener, although it is too, a bit too referential for my tastes. So, I think... Would I put it on the same level as, as my beloved Series 7? You know what? I think I would. Series 8, it goes in good as well. Um... You're going to see a massive quality dip after this point, I think. Oh, hang on. Oh, 7A and 7B are different. Oh, I just noticed that. Hang on. Okay, so 7A. Hang on. 7A. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna re-rank 7 a second. So 7A. Uh, the Angel 1. Town Called Mercy. Power 3. Um, dinosaurs on a Spaceship. I think... Okay, 7A. I'd say 7B is better than 7A. So, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it like this. That's going to upset some people. There we go. I've sort of retroactively made 7B great. Uh, because I love it. So, and it's my list. So, there we go. <laughs> oh, wait. Did they make 6B different? Wait, so... Is this the... I'm really confused by this. Okay, so... Which half of 6 is this? This is the second half. I'm ah, oh, for God's sake. Okay, I need to. I need to like do some research. A second. Bear with me. I'm gonna do some research. Okay, Doctor Who series six. I need to remember which parts are in the first first half and which parts are in the second half. Uh, Impossible astronaut day in the moon. Curse of the black sword. Doctor's wife. Okay, Doctor's wife is in the first part, which alone uh, kind of elevates it. As as is good man goes to war, but oh, Gil who waited in part two. Um, okay. I think I probably put series six, part one above, part two. Hmm. Hmm. Decisions. Decisions. Okay, I think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I, I I didn't realize that they'd split them up. I guess it's because the the filming blocks were separate, weren't they? So um, that explains why they've done that on the list. If that's the first half you haven't ranked. Yeah, I just I just noticed that and I sorted that now. Um, okay, now this is where I think the, the tier list is going to get a little bit contentious. I think it's one of these two. I'm going to put it in active dislike. Okay, full disclosure, I really don't like series nine. Um, like, I'll give Moffat this. He tried to do something different. I don't like how they walk back uh, Capaldi's arc a little bit. I really liked his arc in Series 8. And I kind of feel as though they kind of retroactively change him with not much... Like, we don't really see a development from where he is in Series 8 to where he is in Series 9. Um, you know, I actively still don't like Hellbent at all. 
uh, for multiple reasons. I, I don't like how the hybrid basically goes nowhere. I think Clara has outstayed her welcome by this point. Um, not a fan of Magician's Apprentice, which is familiar. Not a big fan of the Zygon two-parter. I know everyone remembers the speech, but beyond that... <laughs> um, what else? The Obviously, Heaven Stent, it's Heaven Sense fantastic, but, like, it's one story, you know? And, like, the rest of it... Nah, I mean, Under Lake Before the Flood, I guess. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to put it in active disc. Like, I just do not like Series 9. I never have. I've never vibed with it. I don't think I ever will. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just not a series I... I particularly connect with even now um which is a shame but yeah i would say by quite a long way series nine is the worst moffat series um i don't know because i know series nine's kind of garnered a renewed appreciation in the years since it's broadcast but firstly for me it's it's now nah, this ain't it chief you know that's that's what series nine is for me um yeah it's uh, it's not great in my opinion. Um, I mean, face the rain, and I kind of like. I like Clara's exit. It's just the fact that they don't stick to it that kind of annoys me. And you've also got things like Gil who died and Woman who lived who are just eh. And it's very. I feel it always feels very desperate with like the whole Maisie Williams thing. Like oh, guys, please care. Look, we got a Game of Thrones exit. Please. It's like <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, series nine just just doesn't do it for me. Um, if it does it for you, fair enough. I just, yeah, this one isn't for me. Okay, um, with that out of the way, we move on to series 10. <sighs> right, no, actually, mm, okay, I need to, I feel like I need to reorganize some of this. <sighs> this is so difficult, actually, because I don't want to move any of my Matt Smith seasons, but at the same time, I don't know whether I want to put series 10 on the same level. Actually, no. I think I would. Series 10. It's one of these two. It's one of these two for me. It's I don't consider it the best series of New Who, like a lot of people do. I do consider it pretty good, though. And I do think it's, like, a good exit point form of it. Uh, it does have a couple of things that do drag it down a bit for me, though. Like, the Monk trilogy. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, you know, eat, Eaters of Light as well. But then it does have things like the pilot, which is really good. Uh, the emoji one's good fun. Uh, Thin Ice is quite good. I like Bale. It's going in good. I think, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Um, realized I haven't used the middling category, and that's triggering me slightly. Um... Okay, uh, how are we all feeling about this list? Uh, I don't know how everyone feels, uh, whether they think I've got terrible opinions. Only four episodes, nine are good. The Flood two-part, I've faced the Raven. Yeah, I pretty much agree. Series nine has too many two-parts. Honestly, I don't even mind the fact that it has two-parts. I just don't think the, the two-part stories are that good. Um, Empress of Mars. Uh, wait, someone said Empress of Mars. Uh, wait, why did someone say that? Uh, someone said something about that. Series 10 is top two, almost perfect if you remove Empress of Mars and Eatsville. Yeah, I understand why people really like it. I've never, you know, subscribed. Oh, do I put it above Series 2? I'm kind of debating putting it in great, but no, I'm going to keep it in good. Um, keeping it in good. Um, you know, I might... Do I drag Series 2 down to middling? Or do I drag... Maybe seven, seven, six part two. Wait, which one's six part two? You got closing time, wedding, or over song. Let's kill Hitler. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to move six part two into middling, which hurts me to do. Wait, that one's part two. Yeah. Um. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do because I need to balance out this tier list a little bit. Uh, because obviously I don't want it to just be. All the Whitaker series at the bottom, uh, you know, I, I as much as I do consider them to be a massive quality gap, admittedly, I, you know, I don't want it to just be here's all the 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 non Chibnall series at the top, and here is the Whitaker ones at the bottom. Maybe mm, I'm trying to balance it out a little bit, you know, I'm trying to be objective here. 
but at the same time, this is tough. This is really tough. I shouldn't have done this as a first ranking stream. Maybe I put series two in middling because there aren't that many stories I really want to rewatch. So maybe. You know what? What do you guys think? Do you think Series 2 should stay in good, or do you think it should go down to middling? You've got the icons wrong. Six part one, move down. Okay, have I? Hang on. So wait, that's not part one, is it? No, that's part two, right? Oh, wait, no, hang on. Let me change them around then. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Okay, boom. Change that. Done. Um, series 2 in middle, Series 2 in good, Series 2 in middling. Series two, okay, we'll, we'll have a vote, right? You know, put now in chat whether you think series two is good or middling, and whoever does the most is where I'll put it. Uh, we're, we're democracy over here at Therry's, uh, in, uh, Industries Entertainment Limited, LTD. Um, middle, good, good, middle, middling, good, good, middle, middle, good, middle, 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 middle. Good. I think I'm seeing more middles than goods. I think I'm going to have to go middle, I think. I think I'm going to have to go mid. Yeah, okay, I'm moving it down. I'm moving it down. That might annoy some Series 2 fans, but I, I don't think it's fair for... Yeah, no, I think this is this is a, a much better reflection of how I actually feel about the things... Okay. I'm, I'm trying to build up suspense to the Whitaker ones here, and I'm trying to make it so that it's as fair as possible, and I'm just... Is, is Series 2 with Tenant? Yes, it is. It is, yeah. Good, mid, mid, good. Darius, this rig was vote... This vote was rigged. Listen, I'm not Trump, you know? I don't, ri I don't rig things. Um, uh, I think I'm happy with that. I think... I think I'm happy. It's it's hard. Because Series 8 would have been, like, down here before I start my rewatch, but it's kind of gone up in my estimations a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay. Should we get to the should we get to the Whitaker ones, then? Should we get to the Whitaker ones, chat? What are we thinking? Are we, are we getting ready to go to the Whitaker ones? Um... Three is only good. It's kept together through human nature, utopia. Resto uh, no, I, I disagree. I think series three is really solid. Um, have you seen the new Dune? I haven't. It won't be the lowest for long. Don't worry about that. It won't be the lowest for long. Series nine will not be the lowest for long. Yay, Chibnall. Okay, it's time to get into the Chris Chibnall Doctor Who then. The big hot takes. Ah. Uh... Right. Full disclosure, on reflection, I don't really like any of these three. There are bits, I mean, like, okay. So here's how I look at these three series. Series 11 has almost no episodes I would call good, in my opinion. I'm just being, it has a lot of eh to bad, in my opinion. And, you know, I just find it to be a thoroughly dull experience. Series 12 has a couple of stories that I might want to rewatch a bit more, like uh, Haunting or Nikola Tesla, but I really don't like what it does lore-wise, and it relies on the lore way too much more, but at least it does have some stuff going on. And The Vanquishers is kind of the weird middle point between these two, whilst, yes, it concerns itself with lore, it doesn't really affect much going forward, so... Yeah, they are kind of all pieces of the same puzzle, which I guess makes sense, because it's all one showrunner. I don't want to put them all in, oh dear god. Um, you know what? Okay. I can't put Series 9 on the same level as these three. I just can't. There is a quality deficit between the three. So, what I'm going to say... Series 11 is going in, oh dear god. Um, <laughs> that's going to annoy some people, but I just... It's one of them series I just do not find fun to watch at all. Um, they just look too glittery. I'm assuming you're referring to the work seasons. 
I guess there's a lot of lens flares. I mean, uh, glittery is not something I've specifically... They just uh, look glittery. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, Series 11, there's just not much of it I'd want to rewatch. Ghost Monument... Uh, no, not even Ghost Monument. When You Fell to Earth is okay, I guess. It's eh. Ghost Monument, bad. Rosa, eh. Arachnids, bad. Saranga, bad. Demons, eh. Kablam, eh. Witchfinder's bad. It takes you away, eh. Battle around Square of Kolos is garbage and one of the worst finales. And Resolution is probably one of the more fun aspects, but again, it does not do a lot to redeem it. Really not a big fan of the Doctor's character, really not a big fan of the TARDIS dynamic here. It just doesn't have a lot that redeems it in my eyes, personally. Which is why I put 11 on Oh Dear God. Um, yeah, I think... Yeah. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I know that's going to annoy some people. Uh, but yes. That's what we're doing. Okay, Series 12. Series 12, as I said, I probably enjoy a bit more. But, like, it doesn't really improve much quality-wise. And I do dislike a lot of what it does, but I, I don't think I can put it on the same level as 12. Um, as 11, rather. Um, it still has the annoying, like, TARDIS team uh, that I don't really like. has things like Orphan 55 if and Praxius, which I really don't like. But then again, Spyfall Part 1, I think, is a decent start. Spyfall Part 2 really drops the ball, though, uh, in every way. Uh, in every way, I, I, I think Spyfall Part 2 for me is like the beginning of that sort of chibnall trope of like, hey look, here's all these locations, and all these historical figures, and oh wow, here's, here's old villain. It's like all of the things I hate about Chibnall's run are exemplified in Spyfall Part 2 for me. The Doctor's questionable whack morality with the whole master Nazi thing. I think I'm going to put it in an active dislike, I think. There are a couple of things that, like, make it better than Spiral. I'm just speaking, obviously, this is partially... So, just so we don't get it twisted here, this this list is not only... It's based on quality, also, but also it's based on personal feeling. So, it's a bit of both. You know, I'm not, like, the biggest critical man. I'm very, sort of, emotionally driven. So, like, if I get something out of something in terms of uh, overall enjoyment, then I'm going to factor that in somewhat. And I would say that at the time I enjoyed Series 12 more than Series 11, but that's purely because it actually did something. So I think that's why I'm putting it above Series 11, if that makes sense. Whereas, like, Series series 11 just has nothing that I would ever want to go back to, if I'm being completely honest. It just doesn't. Um, have you done specials? They're all accounted for in the series themselves. So um, the Series 4 and the specials are here. Um, and obviously... With, with Vanquishers, I'll include Eva the Daleks as well. Right, now <laughs> now we come to the most recent, I guess. Uh, the Vanquishers. Uh, the final in our list. Um, Resolution was bad, but I love the Daleks. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, the only reason I enjoyed Series 12 more is because it had better standalone episodes. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I'd say Nikola Tesla... I mean, I'd say Haunting alone is better than most things in Series 11. Um, so yeah, maybe. Um, okay, Series series 13, the latest one, Flux. If you'd have asked me this a few months ago, when all we had was Halloween Apocalypse all the way up to Village of the Angels, I'd have probably put it here as the best in Chibnall's lineup. But now that we've seen all of it, and now that we've seen what it culminates in, you know, because it is all one contained story, and we've seen what it was building up to, and we've seen how little it actually does, it just... <clears throat> Flux had a lot of potential, and there are elements of it I like. I, I've said before, I like World of the Centaurans. I've said before, I like... Um, yeah, I said before I liked World of Centaurus. At the time, I liked Halloween Apocalypse, but when you look back at it, you realise it means ultimately nothing. <laughs> because, you know, this series was going to live and die by its final chapter, by how it's resolved. And the fact that the Vanquishers, to me, 
is such a terrible finale, kind of just makes the whole series less good. You know, Once Upon Time, I've said before, I'm really not a big fan of. Village of the Angels, I think is okay. I don't quite get the amount of praise that it got at the time. Um, you know, some people heralding it as the best Weeping Angel story, and I just, you know, I just can't agree with that uh, in any measure. Um, so yeah, on that basis, I think Vanquish just has to be at the bottom, along with Series 11. Uh, so this is this is the ranking as it currently sits. So we've got in Oh Dear God, Series 11 and Flux, Active Dislike goes Series 12, Not Good goes Series 9. Middling, we've got Series 6 Part 2 and uh, Series 2. In Good, we have Series 8, Series 7A, um, and Series 10. Uh, in Great, we have Series 3, Series 6 Part 1, and uh, Series 7B. In Absolutely Fantastic, you have um, Series 1, and in The Best Story Ever Told, you have Series 4 and Series 5, as I said, for different reasons. That is how I'm ranking them. What are we all thinking? Have I done a good job, or have I really angered people with this list? Let me know. How have I done? Have I done good or bad? Rise of Skywalker is bad, I agree. Have I done though? Have I done good? You all happy with with my suggestions? I I, I don't know how the the the, uh, the chap just became Star Wars all of a sudden, uh, but yeah, Force Awakens is the best out of the three sequel movies. Yeah, I agree actually. Um, good boy, Jodie's era is worse than Series Nine. Yeah, probably. It, I did like the Vanquishers when it was released, mainly because, and I, I, so my my development with the Vanquishers was quite interesting. I liked it on broadcast because it didn't do a bunch of, um, it didn't do a bunch of stuff with the Timeless Child, which I didn't like anyway. But upon reflection, I realised it did absolutely nothing, and it actively didn't make sense in a few places. I did a whole video following up because I did an initial reaction to the Vanquishers, and then I did a follow up chat with Jay. Where I was like, I need to get some some of my complaints off about this episode because I've kind of changed my tune about it, and that wasn't due to Jay, um, as some people tried to make it out to be. I actually messaged her, being like, "Can I, you know, do a video with you talking about how much I'm not a big fan of languages?" So yeah, my opinion did change on that one. See, the thing is with my series two placement was I did have it in good, but I couldn't in good conscience keep it in like the same place as like series ten. So, like, yeah, it's there. It's it's not a good take, but it's an acceptable one. I think I'll take that. In fact, you know what? We're going to end off this stream by, um, by tweeting out my opinions to the world, as I often like to do. Uh, where is it? Let me save and download this. Uh, this is what we came up with. Uh, this is my new Who ranking. Um, shift done on screen. So you can all say how wrong I am on Twitter. There we go. Um, well, thank you everyone for uh, tuning into this. It's been a, that's always a bad idea. What Twitter? Yeah, kind of. Dan is just a meme. Yeah, the thing with Dan, I didn't talk about the uh, the dynamic in, in Flux, which did change. I like Dan, but there's not a lot to him. Like, beyond his introduction, they, they don't um, really do anything with Dan. So, um, while I prefer the dynamic uh, in Series 13 than I did to 11 and 12, it's not by much. Um, and to be fair, there isn't really much for Series 13 dynamic because they're barely ever together at any point. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, <laughs> shut up, Alexa. Shut the fuck up. I didn't ask for you to start. Oh, Amazon package will be delivered today. That's probably Doctor Who figures because I have no life. Um, yeah, Dan deserves better. I kind of agree. Like, we have basically no time to know him. I will say, yeah. I, I like Dan, but it's, there's just not a lot to him, really. 
He's not even mentioned he's a plasterer. Very true. Uh, which is funny, because that's the only thing they let us know about him for a while. But yeah, thank you all for watching this stream. It should be up um, yeah, relatively soon after it's uh, like finished streaming. Um, I hope... Yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm hoping to do more of these, because you guys seem to enjoy it. Um, and I'll see you all in a bit. Okay, goodbye!